Hello, Rotswaf. Can you hear me? Yeah. That's great. I, I, am uh, I am Gregor, and I came here from Gliwice because I hear that you have some crime problems in Wrocław. Nearby, seven days ago, there were there uh, some bank robbery. Did anyone of you, did you hear about it? Okay. And actually, I really dislike detective stories. And that's why I want to tell talk a little about observability to you. Each of us has spent a lot, lot of time trying to figure it out what doesn't uh, work in our program. It's, it's fact. I will not ask you about it because it's fact. And it's, for me, it's d d exactly like in some TV series about detectives. They spent a lot of time trying to figure out who made a crime, not why. And that's because the problem with our, uh, the problem which is solved by observability is to trying to find what, where, wh where, what, wh where something happened, then more than trying to fi fix it. So, did any of you work in microservices? Probably yes. And Due to microservices, there are a lot of uh, cases like that. But not only there. Currently, I'm working on Monolith, and there also we are trying to solve some criminal issues. But in my small Monolith, it doesn't scale for you. So let's talk about Twitter. Sorry for uh, lack of uh, resolution in photo. This circle is whole about microservices in Twitter. These little sentences is about microservices in their ecosystem. And the lines are about need of communication between these microservices. There, why I talk about Twitter? Because in 2013, they post a first post about surprise, surprise, observability. And it was named observability at Twitter. In this post, they write a lot about tools, approach, collecting the data, but most important of that was the fact they say about observability. It was one of the first time. But the trigger for this event was <laughs> scaling. They scale for little monolith to big microservices from, the from this image. But for us, Twitter is like New York. New York is a great city, and most of us work in system of scale like probably Grudjans. But there, and of course it's a beautiful city. I hope you are planning to go there to for some vacation. But even in Grudjans, we have some similar, uh, uh, similar institutes like in New York, like police, like hospitals, but actually in the US they have some problems with it. But you know, government, there are similar things. But we as developers prefer to take these big things from bigger players like Funk. Okay, we're creating a new product, we take microservices, vector database, what is uh, quite handy right now? Mm. AI, oh great, we're trying to call to AI and that's all but we are not trying to get from these big players these same institutions which we should have in our systems. And, and yeah, that's <laughs> why I want to talk about observability, because we forget about it. And it's the trying to find what was wrong in their system was the only case why they decide to start writing observability. Not at all. When I try to design system, my first thing is how it will uh, uh, how it will be work when something like this encourage. I want to my system be like this Yenga tower. It need to be resilient, but there is no perfect architecture. Always will be some problem. But if we start collecting this data about problems, then faster we'll be able to resolve them. And because I started talking about Twitter, and in every good story should be a Chekhov uh, shotgun, sorry for name, Twitter write in their uh, article some important things. 
and uh, their things were core stones of free fields of observability. Did you hear about it? Okay, th you didn't hear about it, so I'm very happy about that because it's my job. Okay, so first of them is our dear old logs. Do you have a logs? Anyone have log? Please tell me. Okay, and how many of you know where we should find them? How to use them? Oh, <laughs> CloudWatch. Exactly, but I see there are some difference, and that is the shame because we know how to do log. It's so simple. Sometimes you, we need more configuration, but it's not so hard. And if you don't know where you have your logs, because there are not only console log, logs in our system, but also from our uh, AC2, et, et, et cetera, from our machines, there, there are different, many different logs which we should collect and watch. And if you are not, not doing it, please start thinking about it. It's important. Maybe not now, but f in future, probably you will need to find them. And it's the main problem with logs because we know about them. But if we already have logs and we know how to search, by th search them, how to use them, that's great. But if we don't have, we should start implement them. And I give you one advice which I heard from Jakub Nobrdalik. It's not m from my, it, he is from Java World. He's a great presenter and I love his presentations. He said, we should put logs in such a way that during unit test, we are able to find problem without debugger. It's simple, it's beautiful. And if you are <laughs> doesn't have time to go through your all unit test and uh, implementing this rule, I give you three places where you should start thinking about these logs. First of them are our beloved adapters. What is adapter? Probably most of you know, but adapter is the place when we integri integrate with some third part system. And third part system is the worst thing in our life as developer. Actually, for me, it's the worst thing. For you, maybe it's MongoDB. I, I create one monster wh which gives my friend a li little headache. But for me, the problem are the adapters because we don't own the code outside the adapter. And there are a lot of changes. My beloved one was the fact that in some place, guys from uh, one system changed the names of state in Brazil, and they changed it to XD. It's really story. So it's the first place where you should start putting your logs. Second one is asynchronous communication. It's a lot about it, but webhooks, quiz, even buses. There are the places where something weird can happen because it doesn't go to a uh, proper hour, it, does, uh, it blocked, maybe email was wrong, some data was corrupted, etc. So please console log your all data before and after communication. Last of them is our, as developers, critical business stuff. What is the, the definition for each of us is different, but for me, Critical business stuff is the stuff when somebody from my clients start to call me because something doesn't work on production. And if it doesn't work on production, we have a problem. Because if there are some invoice which was not sent, probably they will able to live without it. But if they need to make some report about payouts, payout, uh, and uh, because in other way, the US government will g throw them to jail, this is the problem and we want to avoid problems. And we, if we don't avoid them, we, don't we want to know why they are here. Okay, so we have logs. Any of you have ever heard about metrics? Yay! <laughs> I'm very happy about that. So what are the metrics? Metrics are aggregated data from your production, development, staging in some visual way. For here is response to requests in my production um, code, which was taken three months ago because now it's quite bigger. And yeah, so we have some metrics and you know how to implement metrics, that's great. But most of you probably doesn't observe, that, observe them. And if you observe them, how many of you implement them in some way? Or it's just, okay, I take it, take it, take it. Probably a lot of you doesn't implement them. But how to start with these metrics? So good guys from Google in 2018 prepare for us great book, 
Site Reliability Engineering Guide, and it was about Site Reliability Engineering. And is this, in the, this book, they prepare for us four places which should be uh, shown in metrics before anything else. Probably you should start thinking about it before going to production because you have more knowledge about your product. First of them was latency. Ah, sorry, these four signals are, are known as four golden signals of site reliability engineering. First of them is latency, is very simple, times to text to respond. If many of your endpoints has responded in 10 milliseconds, that's great. I'm really appreciate that you create such a nice product. But in f during these res uh, responses, there are one endpoint which takes one minute then it's maybe your bottleneck. Maybe there is some problem, allocation. I don't know. It depends on your system. Next of them is traffic. It's, <laughs> it's traffic, number of requests which we get per given amount of time. In bigger players, it's request per Allegro. I don't remember how, the, how many of them they have. 34 per second, something like that. Millions, of course. And <laughs> in my system, it's a quite uh, smaller because it's maybe a million per day, but I'm happy that there are millions per day. And the second, uh, the third of them are the simple errors. We want to know how many errors we have in our system. And the last of them is my beloved favorite saturation. Saturation is about high, high overview of your application, your data utilization, all the metrics, all, all the resources which, which can be, uh, need be to allocated before start of your application. How many do you have RAM on your production? Maybe one gig two gigabytes, and one of them is needed for your application. Great, so you have one gigabyte of uh, um, RAM to use during some high, high traffic, at um <coughs> and during some high traffic. So by keeping an eye on saturation, we are a bit able to notice a lot of interesting things in our system. Uh, in my system, it was something like that. It's from production, because all the sli slides here are from my production, uh, and I'm very happy about beca because company allowed me to use it. And it's about network out, network in. Can you see this big uh, spike right here? Can you see? We'll have eyes. So it was the attack on one of our third part systems. And why it's here? Because we listen to all webhooks from this system because it's banking information and we need them. And the guys were trying to uh, steal some uh, test uh, credit cards from our customers. And as you can see, something like that happened and it leads to uh, running the auto scale role, uh, auto scaling role. So many more instances has go out, go, uh, go up, and we handle this. What is important about this metric that after that, my backend team lead prepare postmortem. Postmortem is a simple paper when we write what goes wrong in our system during some incident. And thanks to this incident, we take a lot of information about fact we shouldn't always l l get data from select a star from DB without any pagination because it can lead to some allocated memory problems, or we should uh, handle graceful shutdown. Okay, so we locks, metrics, and the last of them are tracing. Tracing is about it. Please read it. No, I joke. We don't read, we want to read. Did you ever participate in some uh, type of run? Wow. Please start running, it's for you. Oh, great, you great. Uh, start running because it's for your health. And probably most of you uh, at least once saw some race by your eyes or take a part uh, look at the TV. And this is about, it's all about tracing. We start here and there. And our runner is our trace. We want to know where our, our runner was on given time of request, what he does, uh, did he cheat, did he didn't cheat, cheat, and that's all about tracing. It's knowing what happened from A to Z in your system. Maybe it's monolith, so <laughs> just client calls to your server, very, very hard happy, most of us 
create some, uh, some at least once, or how it goes through microservices. It's very important when you have some bottlenecks, because if you have bottlenecks, your system starts to slow down. If your system starts to slow down, something uh, different can crash than you expect. And in my case, the tracing was very important when we have problems with some business registration, because onboarding to the banks are the biggest pain which I ever had in my life. So trying to find what doesn't go, go, go right was a real, real issue for me. OK, so we have these three fillers. Please remember about them. And now this question is how to start implementing this knowledge to our code, because as always, it's a, a nice idea. We need to have observability. We have logs. The guys from 20 years ago also know that, but most of our systems doesn't have it. I will tell you how we implement it in my, our, in my beloved company, Masterborn. And we use two tools for them. And disclaimer, it's not the only tools which you have on the market, but we are using them. I know there is a Grafana. I know there are New Relic. There are a lot of them. But I now want to know to talk with you about something what I know. That's why I decided to tell you about these tools. So first of, the, of them is our CloudWatch. CloudWatch is quite nice service from AWS, where we can collect logs, where where we can collect the metrics from our mach machines like RAM utilization, this network. Actually, there is a uh, sorry. There is a problem with RAM utilization because you need to install some additional AWS things. But after about that, maybe later or never. This is again some dashboard from my system. Actually, not from my system. From system which I keep with my team life. And this is what this is something what I want to encourage you. I look at this diagram, which I made by, my, by these hands, one per one, at least once per day. Actually, yesterday, because our clients have very important uh, f conference, which leads to many clients in our platform, we need to, I, I spend more time on this dashboard, because I wanted to know what happened if there will be not one million requests per day, but what will happen if we have two million requests per day. Because our system talks to us, and if you don't listen to your system, maybe don't create systems. <laughs> OK, so it's the first thing which I want to show you from um, our products, uh, which we are used. And s but sometimes there is a problem. And for these problems, we handling with Sentry. I love Sentry. It's the second tool which I almost use every day. And for me, Sentry is all uh, about errors. There are some more uh, great uh, features like tracing, etc. But for me, there are errors. Errors are important for us because each error which we fix before our client notice, it's a win for us. If he noticed uh, notice before us, it's a win for him. And you know, I prefer I'm the guy who loves to compete. Probably most of you also don't like to be beaten by your client. And what is great about this tool? OK, from the, this, I can tell you we have 39 uh, errors at least 30 days. So if we have 1 million requests per uh, day, probably it's not something important, because looking at this, it's what about it? Uh, 404. Nothing important. I can go more. more. But if there will be at least 1,000 errors per, per one day on some important uh, endpoint, I don't want to wait until my whole team approve this. G we give some estimation. It goes through, through this whole uh, loop of iterations for tasks. You know, the scrum stuff. I, uh, personally, not uh, my beloved thing. So if you encounter some bigger issue, maybe you should fix it. Because if you fix it something, what can lead to some not nice thing like your client stops getting the no money from you, then that's not nice. But OK, I see we're uh, running out of time. So I want to give you at least one thought in your mind after this presentation. So this thought is, please change the oil in your car, which is your system. Because 
it's most co more costly for your team to change the engine than oil. And now it's time for, thanks for attention. I hope it was at least interesting. Hello. Oh, thank you. Uh, interesting and important. So yeah, let's take a seat. Uh, last questions of the day. Uh, let's see what we got. Um, okay. So, um, do you need logs if you have tracing? Yes. I, I need logs if I have tracing because looking at tracing, it's not always the thing which I want because the in our. Uh, it depends how do you handle tracing. We handle tracing with Sentry. And in Sentry, there are not so many information which I need. And also from logs are sometimes quicker, in my case. So yeah, I think I need the logs. Sounds about right. Uh, what tools are you using for metrics aggregation and monitoring? Do you use any predictive uh, threat monitoring? No, we're just using the CloudWatch, these all metrics which I showed to you. Actually, there are a little more, but we are not at the scale as Netflix or other, uh, other important player on our market to implement such stuff. It depends on scale. Okay, I think at, at with these microservices, which I, we want every one of us want to implement microservices because they are fun, but sometimes we shouldn't. These metrics are enough for me so it doesn't have any bra break of our uh, system uh, from mo moment when we start our production, when our production go live. Yeah. Okay, a uh, more personal question. Uh, I remember from many years ago uh, where uh, I run some uh, apps on infrastructure. I'm not going to bring up the company, but uh, the significant thing was we paid half of our infrastructure costs for aggregating and storing metrics. Uh, is, is it still so expensive? Do you need to uh, be careful? <laughs> Actually, uh, currently we, are not, we don't have any guy who is... It's the gra great name for it is sys sick System Dev Fins Ops, something like that. Uh, we are starting to looking at the metrics uh, beside this fact uh, because um, we start to collecting data from webhooks and our DB rows with costs. But uh, honestly, I cannot answer to your question like, yes, it's half of our uh, money because I don't know. It's not, I'm not uh, yet responsible for this part. Okay, honest answer. Um, how would you start implementing observability uh, if you just have a simple node app deployed on EC2? If I have simple app on EC2, first I would start thinking about the fact, do I need monitoring because if it's going to, it's if it's on production or I want to go to, go to production, I will start in thinking about monitoring. But I would start from simple sentry and all the statistics which we can get from our uh, CloudWatch, bec uh, because there are simple scripts which we can uh, run in our machine, and it should be enough. And if you, s mm, yeah, that's all. <laughs> okay, um, one last thing to bring up. Uh, okay, not not a question, a comment. Monoliths solve most of these problems. Not a question. Uh, but do you agree? Monolith solves most of the problems. Yeah. Uh, yes, I agree with it because mostly I wasn't an, uh, during my career, I wasn't in any project where these microservices make sense for me. I'm not the 10 years old developer who, has enter, who was in the enterprise scale applications, but in our case in Masterborn, and in offer different companies which I w where I was, that was enough. And there are many microservices gives, uh, give us a lot of advantages, advantage, but personally, if I would start application right now, I would start from modular monolith, which you can use some knowledge which we have before on one of our attenders. <laughs>